Well, hello YouTube. You sometimes hear casters say that archers need to be masked. Why is that? And how important is it? I mean, more archers is better than fewer archers, obviously. But that's true for all units. So that is not what, is, what it means. Let's explore in this video what it actually means. In short, the idea is that archers perform relatively better in large army fights compared to small army fights, even when the relative army sizes don't change. For example, 5 crossbowmen can be killed easily by 2 knights, but 50 crossbowmen can hold their own against 20 knights. This is mainly the case because a group of range units can easily all fire constantly, whereas melee units need to path around each other and find the spot to engage. The larger the armies, the lower the percentage of melee units that can engage and deal damage. And the archers might find a choke point, which limits the number of melee units that can engage. Most players understand this conceptually, or know it by experience. But the main question you probably have in a lot of games is, how many cavalry do I need to engage against this ranged army? Or, can I push with my ranged army, or do I need to retreat? when I see the opponent's cavalry numbers. In Feudal Age, you see scouts versus archers, mostly in small numbers, since the scouts player often switches to ranged units himself, and the archer player would else mix in spears. But in the Castle Age, you often see one player go full crossbowman, and the other player full knights, and mixing in other unit types is much less common. So, I decided to crunch some numbers on knights versus crossbowmen, here we have generic Spanish knights against generic Aztec crossbowmen. Both armies have feudal upgrades, additionally the crossbows have botkin arrow and the knights have the second armor upgrade researched as well as bloodlines, since this is the most common situation. Without hill bonuses involved, the last upgrade does not make any difference for either side, since the knights always need 4 hits to kill a crossbowman regardless of whether they do 9, 10 or 11 damage per hit. Furthermore, I decided on using only open field battles without elevation, to keep the tests as simple and reliable as possible. I created 7 different sizes of knight armies and let them engage against different numbers of crossbowmen, until I find out how many crossbows you need to make it an even fight. I ran two scenarios of this setup. In the first scenario, I put the crossbows on stand ground. I moved the knights in wide line formation up to the crossbows, then attack move them beyond the crossbows, and then I sit back and watch. This scenario is very advantageous for the knights, because they can get the opportunity to surround and they don't bug out while chasing running crossbows. When we move up to larger army sizes for this scenario, the relative army sizes hardly change. In fact, the number of crossbows is around 3 times as large as the number of knights. Here is a sneak peek of the raw test data, where, for the given number of knights on the left, each number in the table is the size of the opposing crossbow army, for one test run. The cell is painted yellow when the crossbows won, or orange when they won quite convincingly. Based on this, I noted the minimal number of crossbows you need to have a win chance of more than 50% and made a nice graph of it. As you can see, the required number of crossbows almost follows the straight line 3x plus 1. So, the required number of crossbows is 3 times the number of knights plus 1. Only when the number of knights gets to 15 or larger, you can get away with 1 or 2 crossbows fewer. So, our first conclusion is that in an open field battle without micro, the fight is about even when there are three times as many crossbows as knights. Now to the second scenario, which is very advantageous for the crossbowman. Here, by moving past the flag, an automatic trigger lets the knight's attack move to the crossbowman, while I micro the crossbows by moving away in between shots. For small army sizes, I right-click a specific knight for each shot, in order to reduce the number of knights as quickly as possible. For larger numbers, this seems to get less effective, partly because of overkill, but also because the crossbows move quite slow. If you right-click attack too early, they stand still for longer, and if you click too late, you fire less frequently. 
Moreover, it felt like the crossbows tried to regroup and move slower when issuing the move command after each shot. So for larger groups, I attack move shortly followed by a normal move command. This lets the crossbow stop exactly when they are ready to fire and they seem to slide away instantly when continuing to move, without being hindered by close by knights. As you can see, in larger numbers the AI keeps chasing the crossbows without surrounding them. A human player should be able to engage much more effectively in this situation. But on the other hand, in practice the crossbow player might camp a hill or bunch up against the wood line or sit in a choke point. So this test might still be representative for how bad a fight could be for the knight player. Here you see the raw data for this scenario. With the derived numbers, we can add this scenario to the graph. Now we clearly see that the relation is far from linear. In low numbers, the knights can engage pretty well, but in larger battles, we need way fewer crossbows to win the fight. As you can see, I managed to win a few times with 25 crossbows against 20 knights. So, our second conclusion is that when scaling up army sizes, the crossbows can take much more favorable engagements. In practice, the amount of crossbows you need to win the fight will usually lie in between these two lines. In one situation, you might kill 20 knights with only 30 crossbows, while in another situation you might lose to 20 knights with 40 crossbows. The crossbow player has the advantage of being able to take better fights by hitting and running or sitting in a choke point, and the advantage that melee passing can be poor sometimes. The knight player has the advantage of speed, so he can decide when to take the fight. He also has the advantage that knights generally need less micro, so he can work on his economy more easily during a fight. So the third conclusion is that you need some micro and use the terrain to your advantage in order to make the principle of archer mass work in your favor. So that is why you need to mass archers. And that is why it is so important to keep your feudal archers alive and upgrade them to crossbowmen. Because when reaching castle age, your opponent can have the first six or eight knights on the field quickly. So by that time, you preferably have at least 20 crossbows already. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Enjoy your games.